Northern Group, the Arawa Youth Awareness Forum, have asked the Professor Ishaka Kintola led Muslim rights concern, Murik, and the Christian Association of Nigeria to consider floating political parties instead of dictating to the two major political parties, the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressive Congress, over choices of presidential running mates. AYAF expressed concern over the two religious bodies' interference in the affairs of the APC and the PDP. Well, joining us to discuss this is a political analyst, Biodo Shomi, and the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State Chapter, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Okay, great. So I'm going to start with you until we get Biodo back. Um, so this is... A, a group of bodies telling you or a group of people telling you to stay clear of what's happening within the two major political parties and, and also, um, you know, detailed for all other political parties. And that if you are too concerned, you should go start your own political parties. And I know that Can, um, under Bishop Francis Waloke, had at some point stated, um, you know, what these political parties should do in terms of the issue of a Muslim-Muslim ticket or a Muslim-Christian ticket. But I'll ask you, um, why is Khan so concerned about who, uh, what the religion of the party flag bearer and the running mate is? Thank you very much for asking me. Honestly speaking, I would have refused to participate in this conversation because the group in question is not even worthy of our response. And number two, Khan and Murik are not equal partners. Khan speaks with Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, not with Murik. But because we live in a democracy where people can express their views, most of the time when people express views, there's nothing wrong for us to educate them. Let's put this clear. That politics is about people. There is no one that is excluded in the issue of politics and governance of Islam. One of the errors is that there are so many ignorant Christians out there who probably want to receive applause from people, and they will say that, you see, Christians clearly supposed not to be involved in politics. They get it wrong. Let me put it clear. The Bible says when the righteous are in leadership, the people rejoice. How can the righteous be in leadership if those who call themselves people of God do not participate in the process of bringing up the righteous? The Bible also says that the land, uh, the art and its fullness thereof belongs to God. If I'm a child of God, that means this world, this land, this nation belongs to my father. And I have to take care of it. So our involvement in politics is to show how important politics is to the development of our society, how important politics is to the governance of our, leader, uh, of our society, how important politics is to the way life is shaping in our society. So what we are doing is not to impose. If we keep quiet, the same political system will ask, where are, we, where are our clergy? What are they saying? So what we are doing is to offer suggestion. One, for the unity of Nigeria. Two, for the peace of Nigeria. Three, for togetherness of this country and good governance. You see, I've listened to many arguments when people come around and say they are looking for competence. It's not about faith. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that there are no competent people in Christianity? Are you telling me that there are no competent people in Islam? Are you telling me there are no competent pagans in Nigeria, those who do not have faith? But put it across to those who bring this argument. If we today decide that the governor of Kaduna State will be Christian and the deputy governor will be Christian, will Nigeria know peace? Yes. If we are talking about competence, we have them in millions. But because we want to be together, because we want to work together, and our constitution also talks about federal character. Federal character may not mention religion, but federal character talks about carrying every Nigerian along. Hmm. Imagine a situation where we will have the president of Nigeria from Kaduna State, the vice president of Nigeria from Kaduna State, the SGF of Nigeria from Kaduna State, the speaker of, and, uh, sorry, the, the president of the Senate from Kaduna State and the speaker of House of Representatives from Kaduna State. Will there be peace in Nigeria just because they are capable hands? But before you I'm start arguing about the subject, you have to understand where people are coming from. I'm curious, and I'll quickly ask you this before I go to Biodo. Um, when a person is canvassing, I, I'm just asking, I'm not in any way trying to attack anyone. But when a person is um, canvassing to lead Nigeria, he's not saying, I want to be a Muslim president of Nigeria. I want to be the president of the Christians in Nigeria. He says, I want to lead Nigeria. Why should religion have any play or any role in this? Not in, I'm not also saying that we should not consider religion, um, you know, 
because we're a religious set of people. We're a secular country. We have all kinds of religion, uh, you know, at play. But should, whether you be a Christian or a Muslim, should your priority not be about changing Nigeria? Because I'm guessing that if you're Muslim, Islam is a religion of peace. In other words, whatever you do should be in the betterment or in the interest of Nigerians and to bring peace. So why should we be emphasizing that, oh, if we don't have Muslims and Christians together on one ticket, we cannot douse the tension in the country? Please educate me. Why can that not be you know, my a thing boss, that we jettison and just look at how a person can bring peace? My late boss, His Excellency Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa, in his acceptance speech precisely in May, 2010, when he became the first Christian to be governor of Kaduna State, he made a very nice speech by saying that I'm not going to be a Christian governor. All newspapers in Nigeria took that as the main headline of their news the next day. But sadly, that was a man who suffered religion issue as far as governance is concerned. You see, what we are simply saying in this country is that we are not as visitors to Nigeria. We know this country. We understand this country. If religion is not a matter, simple. Let's look for the best pagan. The second person to be the best, uh, vice president to be the best pagan. Will everybody clap for that? Let's look for the best Christian. The vice president should also be a very good Christian. Will everybody clap for that? Whatever is good for the Ganda is good for, for the Gandhis, is good for the Ganda. So what we are simply saying is we are dealing with a situation we know ourselves in Nigeria. And we cannot shy away from the things that are holding us, from the things that are dividing us, from the things that are creating tension. We are simply saying, we're not saying go and bring any Christian who just because it's a Christian to be governor. We are saying, or to be president, we are saying is that if you are looking for experts, if you are looking for quality leaders, if you are looking for people who would deliver the goods, they are in every tribe in Nigeria, they are in every region in Nigeria, they are in every religion of Nigeria. Okay. So we should go in the spirit of togetherness, find them in all these different identities. Because in Nigeria, the issue of identity has always been a very serious challenge. Okay. Let's not pretend about this. Let's not shy away again about okay. it. Because I'm from Kaduna, I will say this. In one of the national television recently, my governor came out and said, the issue of Muslim, Muslim, it's nothing. Because they've tried it in Kaduna. Can we be honest that in the last four years, Kaduna has been what you'll be proud about? What are the achievements? Uh, is, it, okay. uh, is that what we want? Is, do we just want to be leaders without carrying and uniting the people? Even the most backward community wants to feel their voice is heard, okay. want to ensure that they are part of the decision making in building their nation, in building their community. Right. But a situation where we do not balance in the way we are doing, and we are saying religious do not matter. Okay, we agree it does not matter. But remember, if it applies to you, it shouldn't also matter. We can also just ask the Southwest to give us the president and the vice president and everybody because it doesn't matter. Okay, let me go to Biodo Show. Me, Biodo, you're you're somewhat of a politician, and um, let's look at it from a purely political perspective because there seems to be, you know, a lot of bickering about this Muslim Muslim ticket. In fact, we're yet to hear from the APC who the running mate to. Uh, the flag bearer is because today is the deadline and that is Dito, like I said earlier on, for all the political parties. Um, and I asked, just as I asked him, in 2022, should we be worried about um, the religion of the people who lead us or should we be looking at um, their pedigree, their antecedents, and of course, if they are capable of bringing peaceful and of course, uh, a progressive governance? Yes, um, in the first instance, um, the essence of uh, the discourse on Muslim Muslim tickets or Muslim Christian or Christian, Christian ticket, it's about national development, which huge emphasis on human development and economic development. And when you take it from that viewpoint, you then ask yourself, what has religion got to do uh, with proving experience on service delivery to the people of Nigeria. What has the religious faith of anyone got to do with sense of justice, sense of fairness, creating employment for the people of Nigeria? 
Um, that is the starting point. But when you now stretch it a bit further, you now ask yourself, after all, Nigeria is a secular state. How come we're only talking about two religions, Christian and Muslim? What happened to the original African traditional religious practitioners? Christianity made them here. Islam made them here. Nobody's talking about it. They're only talking about the rivalry between two religions, you know, which in any case are foreign to our own country. And that is what is shaping the discourse, rather than proven experience, ability to contribute to national development. When you take, for instance, in Lagos State, we had a governor in the name of Akiyambode whose wife had to sack the priest of a church in Alausa, not only sack him from employment, he was evicted from his house. And Kiyambode is a Christian. When he was governor, he was a Christian. The wife, a Christian, attending the same church. He was not a Muslim. So for me, I think it's more about the attitude of individuals. If you're a Christian and you choose to be um, a God-fearing Christian, so be it. If you're a Muslim, you choose to be, so be it. If you're a traditional practitioner, so be it. The emphasis of what we need to move our country forward is to not be on, on the basis of the, your religious convictions of faith. Because religion by itself will not contribute to national development um, in, the, in, in the real sense of it, rather than uh, creating the right spiritual environment, uh, developing people to be able to tolerate each other and live harmoniously. But beyond that, it hardly will contribute anything meaningfully to economic development. Rather, it has sat in some cases, you know, as driver, as driver, you know, for underdevelopment. And you can see the old place in all around Lagos and Ubu, where industries, industries were taken over by churches. Industries were taken over by churches. Uh, 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 I think that we're having connection issues there again with you, uh, Mr. Shobi. Unfortunately, uh, we have to let you go. But quickly, um, Reverend Hayab, we have just one minute. We're talking about peace here. We want this, if not for the first time, after 1993, to be the most peaceful elections uh, in Nigeria's history. And for those of us who are peace scholars, we know that there are eight pillars of peace, and religion plays a role one way or the other in it. But how can we also um, douse tension without also heating up the polity with this issue of religion as part of the tickets how do we peacefully um, address this issue going forward so that we don't use it or arm people um, with this, uh, make it a tool of division again, even though we're trying to unite Nigerians? But let's not also, you know, incite people to say, well, if you don't give me somebody that looks like me or goes to the same kind of place of worship like me, then we're going to cause trouble. Uh, so in looking at building peace, uh, at before, during, and after the elections, problem. what do we, are we do? Saying if you do not cook the kind of food we want to eat, we will not eat your food. Because I do not eat your food, it's not war. I'm simply saying that this is what the kind of meal I want to eat for my stomach. I don't want to eat a meal that will create problems to my system. I want okay. to eat a meal that will bring health and bring strength to me. So we are simply saying to the political uh, people, uh, parties that, look, for the sake of unity, for the sake of togetherness, look for a combination that will unite, a combination that will promote peace, not because we are going to go to war. It's simply, if your kind of meal is not good for us, don't blame us for not eating your meal. We would have loved to eat your meal, but we are not going to eat a meal that the combination is not good for our stomach. But let me put it clear for Nigerians to know that Christians have actually never had problem with who leads and who do not lead. Christians can remind Nigerians that we have ever voted for a Muslim Muslim in Nigeria. And the fact about it is that it was even a, a Muslim president who annulled the election. We don't have problem with that. But gradually experience have begun to show that it is only when it is about us that okay. no, there is no issue yeah, about religion. Go. But when it turns to the other side, no, it must not be, we are not going to take it. We are growing in this country. That's why it is not fair, it's not right for you to act 
Contrary, because another time will come, you, people will remember what you did yesterday. When okay. Abiola and King Jube were, the, were elected, they were not elected on the basis of religion. Christians and Muslims went out and elected them. But the moment leadership started having a color of religion, time will not permit me to give you the history of how Abiola go. came into power, <laughs> the service that was held, and what triggered the Sharia that caused all the conflict. That's yeah. why we want a team that will unite the country, a okay. team that will carry everybody in the country, but we are not asking for novice. We, we have to go. We have people. to go. And there are good people in every place. All right. Reverend Joseph Hayab is the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State Chapter. And Biodo Shomi is a political analyst. Unfortunately, we lost uh, contact with him. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Well, that's it tonight on the show. We want to say thank you. We hope you enjoyed the week of conversations. We'll be back next week, Monday, as the political stories keep brewing. We're here to report it and ask the right questions. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.